The Lord said, brought, Lord brought some more sweet corn in, so up up in the hill. And good to see my mom made it this morning, back there. So, okay, this uh, is a continuation of last week. Didn't you always hate that when you was a kid, you was watching a show, and then at the end it says continued next week. You always hated that, but this is on on. Health for the body and soul. So if anybody wants to take notes, how about passing some, whoever wants to take notes, or you can get online. I'm gonna see, anybody wants to take notes? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about uh, 75 mile an hour. Maybe even get up to 90. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Uh, tomorrow night, I think they're still going to try basketball down at Rinsel Tuck. First Corinthians nine, biblical health for the body, and this is going to be like a smorgasbord. So you just walk in, take what you want, throw out what you don't want, try this, try that, uh, go to the dessert bar, whatever. So I'm just throwing out a bunch of ideas. Jan and I've been uh, we, we mem- remember uh, transferring to health and about like eating us. Uh, Spaghetti sauce on a piece of cardboard, that was a health pizza. And we've learned to make things actually taste better, find alternative sources. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, I believe this is part of the incorruptible crown. If you want to take notes, i got that for you. And if you can keep up, if you can't, uh, you can get online. Eventually, it'll be online. 1 Corinthians 9.24, let's go ahead and pray first. Lord, I do ask you to help us to understand these ideas. Help us, each and every one of us, to be good stewards of our bodies. As parents, help us to be wise and guide our children. Uh, But Lord, I just pray you'd help us to seek uh, possible alternative sources uh, and help us to really think things through and be careful. Help us to consider and be careful what we do put in our body. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Okay, and now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body. That's a tough one. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I don't bring my wife's body into subjection or my kids' bodies in subjection. I'm responsible for me. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Of course, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. None of us do that 100% 100 of the time. None of us do. We'd probably be lucky if we get 50% of the time. Okay, and so I want to give you uh, uh, seven vital areas of complete health. If you would, go to uh, 3 John, 3 John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, or Revelation, and then Concordance. If you have that in your Bible, I didn't put it in ours. Okay, 3 John, verse 2. Uh, a lot of the ways you learn things is by analogies. You put them side by side, and you learn a lot of things. And so 3 John, verse 2, John said this to uh, this fellow named Gaius. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Now, priority is obviously the soul, but John is trying to hit both of them. Okay, and so obviously our priority is our soul, but I want to try to hit both of them. And both uh, the ideas, these seven vital areas, help both our body and soul. Both of them are put together. And all I want to do is just get you to consider some things, okay, uh, and you decide for yourself what you're going to do. Romans 14, 20 says, for meat destroy not the work of God. Okay, so it's not an issue. I'm not going to, you know, have an invitation and try to get you to come down and say, I'm never going to go to McDonald's again. Okay, so nothing like that. Um, It's just some things to consider. Remember that God created Adam a healthy man in a healthy environment 
in order to fellowship with God. Before the fall of Adam, he, he uh, lived off of fruit. Fruitarian, some might say fruitarian. So he lived off fruit, okay? Fruit that grew above the ground. After the fall, God added fruit, or fruit and vegetables that grew below the uh, ground, you know, beets, potatoes, so forth, so on. Um, that's what he survived on. In, Ge- in Genesis 9, after the flood, God said to Noah, okay, you can eat that Big Mac now. Okay, so that's Genesis 9. I don't know if anybody ate that before that. I have no idea. There's no record of it. I'm just telling you what the record shows. So in 9, he said, every moving thing you can eat. You know, spiders, you know, tarantulas and all that stuff. If you want to talk to somebody, eats that. Josh Tremblay, he tries those things when he goes out to China. Crunchy, crunchy. Okay, uh, and then when God made a deal with Israel, proposed to Israel, uh, he had a selective diet for Israel, Leviticus 11. He said, okay, uh, for you, in order to be my uh, bride under the Old Testament, in order for you to do that, uh, then you cannot eat pork, shrimp, and clams, and lobsters, and all those, any scavenger, okay? And that's all in Leviticus 11, okay? So that's with Israel, okay? Now, the lifespan in the Bible went from 900 down to 120, 120 at the flood, and so it appears to me after the flood, everything goes by a standard of 120 years. And then it starts going down, depending on culture, depending how environment, uh, you know, as far as the way people are, or the way they eat. When you get into the primitive cultures where they're eating bats and mice and all this kind of stuff, their lifespan's dropping down into 40. And lack of sanitation, it's dropping down. Okay, and that's part of judgment. Okay, uh, the standard people think 70 and 80 years is in Psalm 90. And if you read the context, it's a, it looks like to me it's a society under the wrath of God, lives 70 and if by strength 80. Now, we know that's not the standard because my grandparents on dad's side lived to be 90. And so I think each society, <clears throat> depending of how things go, a person can expand or decrease depending upon how we reap or sow into our body. Okay, now, obviously, again, as I mentioned last week, God allows physical ailments without a cause. Now, many of our physical ailments is something that we probably messed up, but God will allow that. For example, the great Christian Paul was sick all the time. Going into a foreign culture, eating their food, getting their parasites, you're going to get sick. So God places the spiritual above the physical. So, so at times we got to do that. Jesus Christ sacrificed his body for spirituality of Calvary. Okay, and so if you read Song of Solomon 5, it describes Jesus Christ. And you can see the description was a man, a man's man that was in good health. Okay, where he mentions that his uh, navel's like ivory, strong midsection. Legs of pillars, eyes washed in milk, a white, really white in your eyes is a sign of very high health. So, okay, just a smorgasbord we're going through of the seven, and the first thing is pure air. The first thing when you came out of mama, somebody hits you for no good reason, and all of a sudden you scream. Why don't they throw water on you? I think that'd do better. Throw cold water on them. Okay, and so uh, that pure air, <clears throat> that breath of life, started this life on earth. Now, obviously, I believe it's a conception, life begins. But still, on earth, outside the womb, it starts with pure air. In the Bible, air is portrayed as the Holy Ghost. John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Those who are born of the Spirit are like the wind. Okay, he's like the wind. And then 2 Thessalonians 3, Paul said, Finally, brethren, I pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified. Free course is an admiralty term. In law. It's an admiralty law. It's a term in law that when you're sailing and you have a wind that's blowing you toward your destination, you're blowing on free course. And so the Spirit of God blows on our spirit, breathes on our spirit to push us toward Christ. 
And that's a free spirit. So we need to breathe good air. Um, <clears throat> oxygen, an oxygen-rich life is a spirit-filled life. Deep breathing exercises are not bad things unless passive meditation is added to them. Then it becomes bad. That's the problem with yoga is because they get into the passive meditation. If it's a concentration on the, the breathing, there's a health technique with those things on the breathing. A uh, breathing outdoors, especially after a rain and lightning storm. Especially after that. Because the lightning produces a peroxide and a nitrogen, a form of peroxide, and that's what purifies the air. And you know how the air smells after a rainstorm. Being raised on a farm, when the weatherman said it's going to be a nice day, we thought, oh, that's a bad day because it's going to be sunny. And when it rained, we thought, oh, that's a good day. <laughs> okay? And so, and in, in your house in the wintertime, I, you know, I think you ought to have plants in your house. Why? To get the oxygen from the plants. Okay? And so pure air. That's very simple. The second one is pure water. Pure water. <laughs> Uh, now, people think oh, any water is good water. If that's the case, then drink out of the toilet. I would suggest you flush it a couple times. Um, no, any water is not good water. Um, pure water. Now, in the Bible, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1, God likens his doctrine like the rain which shall distill upon the earth. Okay, a distiller. You know, I got a water distiller corn distiller beside it, but a water distiller, and what that does is that that is like the rain. Now, there's uh, with distilled water, maybe a person, I would suggest maybe throw in some minerals or maybe some Himalayan salt or sea salt because that helps the body absorb the water. Uh, distilled water flushes out toxins very quickly, sometimes too quickly for some people. Or you can find um, good... Rainwater, I'd suggest to run the rainwater through a filter of some type. Maybe let it go the first 10 minutes before you take it. You know, get all the chemtrails and then, then get the good stuff. Uh, you run it through a porcelain filter, like a Berkey or something like that. Uh, I would not suggest any tap water. I would avoid tap water like the plague, especially if you're in a city. What do they put in the tap water? Chlorine fluoride. What do the German and Russian officers put in the water to keep the prisoners calm in prison camps? Chlorine and fluoride. It makes a person passive. How much water should a person drink? And when I say water, I'm talking H2O. I'm not talking H2O with a little sugar pumped in and a lemonade and all this stuff. Uh, upon rising in the morning, a pint to a quart right off the bat. Just pure water. Why? You haven't drank for about, depending on how long you slept. You haven't drank much. You're dehydrated. All of us are dehydrated. That's our, a lot of our biggest problem is dehydration. We're not drinking enough water. People get depressed because they're dehydrated. Drink the water. And one of the difficult things is to get old people to do in the nursing homes, they won't drink water. Okay, and how much water should a person drink? Well, you know, you got all these different opinions, and again, all I'm doing is throwing these things out. You study for yourself. Uh, if you weigh 200 pounder, uh, you divide that in half, 100, and so you, you minimum of 100 ounces throughout the day of water. Just water, not tea, not coffee, not all that stuff, just the water. You say, I'll be going all the time. Well, you're keeping the plumbing cleaned out. The urine test is one test you don't have to study for. Okay? And the more clear it is, the more hydrated you are, the more yellow and toxic it is, it's showing you're not hydrated. That's your test. How are we doing? So, drink the water. Okay, in the Bible, the water is uh, portrayed in Deuteronomy 32, be the word of God. But also in John 7, it's portrayed as the Spirit of God, rivers of living water. But in John 4, Jesus Christ, what did he offer the woman at the well? I'm going to give you living water. Living water. Okay, and so 
water is portrayed in the Bible to be the Word of God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ. So we got a good trinity there. But the idea is drinking enough water. I mean, uh, I, we got a good well. I, I've never had as good well water as this, even better than the farm. I mean, the farm water was good well water, but man, this is even better what we got. And so we can take care of that, drink that. And uh, so a lot of things. You can find, if you get online, <coughs> findaspring.com. And uh, this is a website that has many springs that are natural springs. So we found one in Australia 20 minutes from Heidi's house. It's just out in the mountains. It's out in the middle of nowhere. There's a hole in a rock. And water flows out all the time. doesn't stop. Put the jugs underneath there. Bring the jugs home. You can probably start a water business. You know, but uh, the closest one I know here in our area is um, Delphi. There's one uh, west of Delphi, a spring there. It's a big brick house like a plantation house. Uh, but that's the only one I know. I, there's one in Damat, but that one was a result of... Um, they were drilling for natural gas and then struck this water uh, main, and they got a pipe there, and water comes out, but it's got a sulfur smell to it. Okay, but that's the, other, the only other one. It's just a little bit um, uh, east of Damat, just a little bit north of uh, 10 as it comes across there. So, the idea, drink water. Okay, third thing, living food. We get life from life, death from death, living food. Okay, in the Bible, the Bible is portrayed as all the food groups. The Bible itself is portrayed as milk, 1 Peter 2, 2. Okay, then uh, meat in Hebrews 5, in 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, bread by Jesus Christ in John chapter 6. I'm sorry, John, uh, Matthew chapter 4. And then it's portrayed as fruit. Fruit in... Proverbs chapter 8, verse 19, the fruit of my mouth. Okay, so it's portrayed, Proverbs uh, 8, verse 19. So you got those four. Now, the world says you've got to have all four at the same meal, but no, 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 no. Okay, that's what the advertisement pitch is. Okay, but we do need those products, but we need to research the products. Okay, Jesus Christ is called bread in John 6. So the food is portrayed to be the living word of God, the flesh and bones word of God, Jesus Christ, and the, and the paper and ink word of God, the Bible. So that's our food. Okay, if people fed their dogs like they feed their soul, it would be as skinny as could be. They just don't feed their animal, you know, they feed their soul enough. Now, the idea of eating food, what is the goal of eating food? Just to satisfy my appetite? You say, well, to live. Yeah, but what do you mean by to live? It means to get energy. The purpose of food is to have energy. Okay, on Thanksgiving Day, when we go to the farm, <clears throat> I intend and plan on being tired all afternoon after I eat turkey and potatoes and the stuffing and I get to watch Dallas and the football game. That is planned. That is intended. I know it's wearing me out because it takes so much energy to digest the food. I'm not getting hardly any energy from it. A farmer across the street from us, he was cultivating his crops, and he said, I got tired at 9 o'clock in the morning. So he got tired because of his breakfast he probably ate. <clears throat> he crawled under the tractor, left it run, and took a nap. He said he woke up when the sun was going down. <laughs> so he wasn't getting an en energy from his food. Okay, what do I mean by that? How much energy it takes you to digest the food to get energy from the food? Okay, if you're really extremely tired after eating the meal, then it's taking a lot of energy to digest it. So how about being efficient? Okay, how many of us men, how many of you men hate it? When you miss the wrong turn and you got to backtrack. How many of us hate that? Oh, I hate that. Why? Because you're not efficient. You're not going from point A to point B. Now, if I want to take a cruise, you know, I get on a motorcycle, I don't care about point A to point B. But when I want to get to a place, what drives me nuts is inefficiency. Okay, if we take that to food, 
the most efficient way to get energy from your food is to eat fruit by itself on an empty stomach. This is one, uh, there are a few rules of all these years of health that I personally stick very close to is eating a fruit by itself, empty stomach, never after a meal, never during the meal. Okay, last Monday, took the motorcycle, went down to Monticello, had to buy a John Deere combine for Simon and Luke, a toy. So I get the thing bought, stop it at a Wally World, got two, bag, two pounds of Bing cherries and two pounds of asparagus. Sometimes they call that asparagus. Okay, so I had two pounds of that, two pounds of Bing cherries, split the Bing cherries in half, put them between my leg and just rode cruise to a Rensselaer, down on them, spitting the seeds out, down on them, spitting the seeds out, and get there and played 11 games of basketball in a row. That's all I had was the cherries. Could have went further, especially when Juan's on my team. It's really nice when Juan's on my team. Juan and I like to get on the same team. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so that is a high efficiency, high efficiency. Fruit, when it goes into your body, it goes into your belly, in 30 minutes it's out of your stomach, into your small intestines, and is assimilating in your body that quick. Okay, meat takes longer than that. So if you eat some meat, <clears throat> eat some meat and throw fruit on top of it, the fruit is now fermenting, and of course you have all the entertainment from the fermentation. Work that through, you know, beans and musical fruit. So in the Bible, <clears throat> in the Bible, it's called the fruit of the womb, right? It's called the French fries of the Spirit. Oh, the Big Mac of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit is all through this book. Fruit of your mouth. Fruit of the ground. Fruit uh, of the Spirit. That's on purpose. Fruit is living food. It's alive. It's alive. It's living. Okay, you can take a raw carrot, and how many of you witnessed if you left it on the counter? and you'll see it continue to sprout. There's life there. When you cook it above 170 degrees and kill it, it becomes, in, it becomes organic, it's dead. It's of no value, per se. You can still get minerals out of it, but the raw carrot is much better than the cooked. Okay, and so it's just like if you and I get a fever above 107, what does that do to our body? The same idea. I'm not saying don't cook for... I'm not saying... Live like this. I'm saying it's just some things to consider. Just a little smorgasbord. Watermelons, eat them alone all by themselves before the meal. All by themselves. You'll be, you'll be surprised. And there's even one health technique where they actually juice the rinds. And that's supposed to be very healthy for you. So watermelons, cantaloupe, all by itself, okay, on an empty stomach. And you'll be amazed. You don't get to feel the... Big fullness. But that's a wonderful thing about fruit. You can just keep shoving it in and you don't gain all that weight. I mean, just shoving it in. Blueberries. I hated picking blueberries growing up. Oh, I hated that. And when I decide when I get to be, I'm paying somebody to pick them blueberries. But once I start to pick the blueberries, I would discipline myself. Don't eat them, don't eat them, don't eat them, don't eat them. And I'd get about, you know, a little bit on the bucket and then I'd put one in my mouth. Then, then it's every other one. But, you know, and, you know, that's how it goes. But that's fruit and vegetables, okay? Uh, let's see. Fruit smoothie, obviously. Some people think it would be too much sugar. We'll throw in spinach and kale, then that would counter the sugar on that. Another rule that I, uh, fruit is one I probably hit 90%. That's myself. <clears throat> Another rule that I probably would hit maybe 60% is food combining. What's a big seller in the drugstore? Antacids. Tums. Roll aids. What's roll aids? Two queers rolling down a hill. Okay, and so, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> roll aids. What is the problem with that? <clears throat> Antacids. It's, it's the improper food combining. Okay, on, uh, did I bring them in? I must have left them in here. I have a, a sheet front and back where it talks about food combinations. 
Okay, if you want to have a nice steak, we had a nice steak. Okay, uh, this past week. So if I'm going to be careful about my food combinations, I'm going to eat my steak and green beans and a salad. Not a baked potato. Because that would be confuse the body of the digestive enzymes, digestive juices. If I want my baked potato, I eat my baked potato and my green beans and my salad. Okay, why? Because the body can do something with that. If the body's throwing all these <clears throat> digestive juices in and you got these counter things going on, it neutralizes digestive juices plus drink of all the water neutralizes them more. Everything starts fermenting and then you're really not being efficient. You're not being efficient in the diet. So I, I have a, a paper that you can look at if you wish. It's about food combinations. A person can use digestive enzymes as an alternative rather than, uh, rather than uh, antacids and things like that, and so forth and so on. Okay, enough of that. Uh, meat with vegetables, potatoes, I covered that. Meat. The problem with meat in the stores is the hormones and the immunizations. Find a farmer that grows them organically. I think I know somebody in here that does that. <laughs> okay, and uh, shoot a deer. Get Bambi. Okay, fish. Deep sea fish better than but even that. Okay, things in the wild. Doesn't have the vaccines, doesn't have the immunizations, doesn't have all, all that's involved with it. Uh, and the girls are going through puberty much younger in our culture because of the things they're pumping in the meat. There's a reason for those things. Again, I'm not saying being a vegetarian. I'm saying we just got to be uh, careful and cautious what we eat. And then you got to reward yourself. If you're good for a while, reward yourself. Go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> I mean, when we started this path, we said if we were good for a month, then we reward ourselves, and we did. And we did everything. The joyful food, save that when you're ministering to people. When you're ministering to others, who cares about diet? Man, spiritual is more important than physical. Enjoy it. I mean, uh, <coughs> holidays, enjoy those things. But m much of the time, learn to discipline yourself and... and, and um, Explore with your body. What gives me energy? What helps me to keep going forward? And, and uh, experiment with yourself. But again, Romans 14.20 says, For me, destroy not the work of God. Don't be fussing with people about it. Okay, the fourth thing. <clears throat> vigorous exercise. Vigorous exercise. Okay, now this is one thing. Like Ruckman, if people that know Ruckman... He liked to eat bacon when it was wrapped around his finger, I think. Um, I think that's how he liked it. Or is it real crispy? It was crispy. Okay, it's real crispy. I mean, he didn't really, you know, he would eat with Lester Roloff, and Roloff would have a big salad, and he'd have his bacon and everything, you know. But the one thing about Ruckman is he exercised. Played hockey until he was in his 80s. you got to admire that. So maybe he didn't do the diet thing, but he exercised. we got to exercise rigorously. Vigorous exercise in the New Testament uh, for us in the soul, that would be our witnessing, teaching, preaching. When you witness and teach and preach or tell people things, they're going to ask you questions, and that's going to challenge us. That's our exercise. Body exercise profiteth little, but godliness is great gain. It does profit little. At my age, you know, <clears throat> trying to exercise just to keep it from sagging. Who cares about building muscle? <laughs> okay, just trying to keep her together. Okay, in your exercise, what you're doing is you're keeping your blood and oxygen flowing. <clears throat> so don't we want the blood of Jesus Christ flowing in our soul? And so it's the same thing. We need to keep our blood flowing. This is why I drink apple cider vinegar, because it cleans out the blood vessels. You get the plaque out. What causes high blood pressure is you got plaque in there, and your heart's got to pump harder, so it's got a higher pressure. It's got to push through there. And so that's where the high blood pressure comes. So apple cider vinegar. Put it in, uh, you know, in your water, a little bit of honey. Cleans out the blood vessels. Dairy farmers used to do this. They used to give it to the cattle, and their udders were more pliable. They didn't get mastitis. 
But you see, the meat and dairy industry is not going to tell farmers these things. And so vigorous exercise, rebounder, trampoline. I'm so glad we grew up with trampolines. There's a place went out of business when I was a kid. They had eight trampolines. Dad bought all eight of them for $35 a piece. And all the cousins had trampolines. One of our friends, they put a basketball goal by the trampoline. It's the only way a white boy can jam it. <laughs> it's fun. Trampoline, a little rebounder, moves the entire limp. Moves everything. Gets everything moving. Okay, and a trampoline builds coordination. Amazing coordination a person can get from a trampoline. In other words, exercise. The word disease, what's the last four letters? At ease. People aren't moving. Okay, so they got to move. They got to exercise. They got to keep things flexible and going. <clears throat> okay, number five, sunshine. Get outside. Get outside. Absorb the sun. Malachi 4, verse 2, Jesus Christ is called the Son of Righteousness, upper, uppercase S, U N, Son of Righteousness. You need to get outdoors. <clears throat> get outdoors and let the kids walk barefoot. Oh, what about the parasite? Forget it. Let them walk barefoot. Uh, barefoot, walking barefoot on the earth allows energy from the earth to absorb into your feet, come into your body. It's not a new agey thing. It is a natural thing. Older folks down in Florida, what do they do? They walk barefoot on a beach. One of the best things you're doing, you're breathing that good oxygen coming off that ocean and you're walking on it. And then you take off running and you run the white right way. You run barefoot. That's another thing Ruckman would do. He would run barefoot. And when he'd get back, he would fall right into his great big tub of freezing cold water. See, those are health techniques that he developed where he could eat the way he wanted to eat and still had some great benefit. He lived in, in, in his upper 90s or mid low 90s. That's pretty good, especially from the life that he lived before he was 27, before he got saved. So what I'm saying, all seven of these, you know, you can take one here, two, the more you do, the merrier you can be. But the idea of sunshine, you absorbed a vitamin D from the sun, uh, your shoes, them Indians got it right. The shoes need to be flexible. Okay, many people get plantar fasciitis. Why? The shoes curl up the toes. It's almost a conspiracy. You go to any shoe store, look at the tennis shoes. They curl up, curl up, curl up. Put strain on the bottom of your feet, causes plantar fasciitis. Good running shoes you could... Flex them this way, back and forth. You're almost running barefoot. That's a good running shoe. Really good running shoe. Or to run barefoot. Okay? And a lot of people have a feet problem because of the shoes that they're using. Sunshine. Outdoors. Get outside. Boys need to get outside. I mean, just get outside. Play in the dirt. Go outside clean. Come home dirty from head to foot. Have a frog in this hand, you know, and have something over in this hand. You know, just grub everywhere. I mean, that's good sunshine. The, th the, four the sixth one is proper rest, relaxation, and elimination. <laughs> Number one, cancer. Colon. Number one, cancer. Why? The septic tank's not flowing. If your septic tank and your house clogs up, don't call me. <laughs> if your body's septic tank clogs up, problems. Okay, uh, but rest and relaxation, R&R. &R. We need R&R. &R. Take vacation. Get away from people. You need that. R&R. &R. Uh, Jesus told the apostles, you need to come apart. You need to get away. Jesus said, come unto me, all you labor heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, <clears throat> this one, rest and relaxation, I would dare say, is where faith steps in. Why? Because we want to always be doing, 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 doing the work of the ministry, doing, 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 doing. If I relax, it's not going to get done. You forgot about God. He'll take care of things. Relax. Let God build his work. 
And so there's times we need that rest. A person can be doing all these other areas and he's constantly going, 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 and then he, he's not helping himself out because he's got to rest. A person's got to have rest. On that, you could, as you, there's a technique called earthing where you walk barefoot, you can buy a bed sheet with silver lines through or silver wires through it and plug it into your grounding outlet and you're grounding all night long. We've got that. We've got a pad where you're grounding all, and when you put your feet on it. Uh, <clears throat> we need to sweat. Rest, relaxation. Okay, sweat, I think, goes back to Genesis chapter 3. And on, on the idea of sanitation, we need to use running water. It's interesting. Years ago, there was a plague in Europe. I forget exactly where it was. People were dying like crazy, <clears throat> but the Jewish people were not dying. So instead of the people said, why are they dying? Why don't we go to them and find out why they're not dying? Why were they not dying? Because the Jewish doctors washed their hands under running water, and all the other doctors washed their hands in a basin. Infection just keeps going. And instead of taking heed to their sanitation of the Bible, you'll find this in Leviticus 15, they blamed the Jews and said, it's their fault we got the plague. How about going to these people and finding out? In cultures where the sanitation is pathetic, like China, open sewers, okay, that's not healthy. And that's why some of these cultures, these people are uh, dying young. Proper rest, relaxation, elimination. Yeah, sit on the white throne. Okay, the last one. Body balance. This is a whole different idea. Body balance is timing. Okay, uh, and body balance, uh, Paul said uh, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, I pray, and it's a prayer he, he prayed. He said this, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. Be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's well-rounded. Now, we know that, ba that Paul, going into foreign cultures as he did, got sick all the time. He was sacrificing himself, his body, for spiritual means. Okay? And so there's times we do that. But there's a balance in our body. Isn't it amazing how our comfort range is very small? Below 65, I'm cold. Above 75, I'm hot. Very small. 99 degrees, oh, I'm feeling fever. 100 degrees, oh, I'm feeling fever. 98 points, oh, I'm feeling okay. Very small range in there. Uh, your body is very similar to the ground, okay, and your pH level. 7 is a neutral pH level. 7, it's something, 7. Okay, and if you get above 7, 7.1, 7.2, 7.5, alkaline. Below 7, 6.8, 6.7, 6, you're acid, acidic. Now, you can buy um, uh, pH strips, put them in your tongue, and then you can look at the color and you can see where you're at. Most Americans are acidic. Cancer thrives in an acidic body. So how can we take care of that? Help our body become alkaline. Okay, in agriculture, the water pH, if the farmers use water pH, uh, maybe it's 5. They can throw in peroxide. Tell me if I'm right, Ronnie. Throw in peroxide and kind of raise the pH, uh, something like that. How do you raise the water pH? Plants accepted below six? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so now you go to health food stores, you can find uh, pH water that's 8.4. Where they can have a machine and make the water pH higher to alkaline. And that will help raise your alkaline in your body to help curb, curb cancer. So... Fruit and vegetables are on the alkaline side. Meat and processed foods are on the acidic side. So that's the balance a person tries to reconcile. And you can buy these pH strips so you can check yourself. 
but most people are acidic. And then a person, God, you know, God has designed the body and the earth to be self-healing and self-regenerating. Do you remember the Valdez oil spill? Oh, that's not going to produce anything for 50, 100 years. Ten years later, it's like nothing ever happened. Why? Because God built in the earth a natural healing and regeneration as he's done us. Okay, but yet we can increase that healing by herbs and things like that. When I say, you know, herbs where you could poultice, you can give body necessary things to help heal itself quicker. Energy healing, things like that. And, of course, the Lord has allowed us to find some of those things. But there's a body balance, and it's a matter of timing. It's very much like our engine. If your engine jumps time, it's not running. If it's off time to run rough, it's good time. It's going to run efficiently. So, seven areas, body balance. Any one of the seven will help. The more, the better. It's between you and the Lord. <clears throat> okay, take care of the body God's given you. And uh, just experiment, see what's best for you. Okay, we'll go ahead and pray. Lord, I do pray and ask you'd help us to understand your words. I pray that you'd help each and every one of us <clears throat> to recognize the body that you've given us, you've entrusted us with, that you'd give us wisdom to know how to take care of our body, but more importantly, to feed our soul. To feed our soul. That's much more important. If we have to choose, let's feed our soul. But if we can do both, Lord, help us to do both. In Jesus' name, amen.